Good morning, good afternoon, depending wherever you are. Welcome to our webinar uh, with me. I have the immense pleasure uh, to present with Vedram Prorok, who is our um, product owner of IVP for maintenance, repairs, and operations. So along with uh, Wes and Acker, we're gonna walk you through uh, some interesting content, especially focus on um and just to get into presentation mode here um it's focused on digital transformation for your maintenance repair and operations leveraging sap integrated business planning for mro so welcome everyone in today's agenda we're gonna have a solution overview uh talk about the business process because beyond the solution this is about any transformation has to deal with process. And of course, uh, walk through a demo. Uh, and then we'll move into customer success stories. So this is a solution that has been proven across industries, applicable industries and, and the globe. And then we'll talk about how Western Acker can help you with that uh, maintenance and operations of, um, transformation, right? And it's what we call it an, an OP process. And then we'll wrap up with Q&A. And so we'll welcome your, your questions via the chat. Um, and of course, after this webinar is completed, um, you can always reach out with questions if needed. So with that, let me pass the baton to Vedran. So Vedran. Good, thanks a lot, Alexis. And thanks for a nice introduction. Uh, as Alexis mentioned, I'm Vedran Prorok. I'm a product owner in SAP IBP. And today we'll be talking about how we can use IBP to improve maintenance planning processes as well. And uh, yeah, before I jump into a solution overview, let's talk about the main challenges that come up with maintenance planning. And really, we talk about three primary topics. First, we discuss variance. And when I say variance, I mean the intermittent or sporadic nature of maintenance. Um, so because breakages happen relatively infrequently, parts that are used to repair them are used infrequently, which then winds up leading to stock out situations. We know from, uh, we know from our experience that up to 50% of unscheduled asset downtime is related to the right part not being available. And uh, because we have this unscheduled asset downtime, what we see is that planners wind up over buffering with stocks in the mid to long term. So in a longer horizon, we see inventory holding costs uh, increase to buffer due to unscheduled asset downtime. The, the second challenge is what we say is volume. And when I say volume, I really mean the sheer number of product location combinations involved with maintenance planning. So we know that there tends to be more complexity in terms of volume when we plan for maintenance. And when you combine that with the sporadic nature um, of the part usage, it becomes very challenging to manually plan. And finally, we talk about the challenge of visibility. And when I say visibility, what I really mean is the decentralized approach that many organizations take to maintenance planning. So what we see in various industries is that typically organizations plan uh, on plan budgets on a plant level or operation site level. And we know that this leaves a big opportunity on the table by taking a more holistic approach, by looking at it in a real supply chain network view, um, there's a lot of opportunities for optimizing inventory and reducing inventory holding costs while increasing asset uptime. So to, to address these issues, we introduce IBP for MRO. And IBP for MRO leverages the IBP platform together with features and functionalities that our team is developing specifically for the maintenance use case. And really what we're trying to do is help organizations move from this firefighting approach that we see often in maintenance settings to a more integrated process where different parts of an organization are working with each other in unison to drive operational efficiency. All right, let's talk about the solution architecture. 
So we have two primary integration points with the ERP system. First, we have our out-of-the-box integration with plant maintenance. And here we're getting all of our operational maintenance data directly into IBP. We're integrating our preventative maintenance. So this is our scheduled planned maintenance. Together, we're also looking at our historical corrective maintenance, so any breakages. We want to analyze that historical breakages and, uh, and create a, a plan in the mid to long term. Then we we'll also have an out-of-the-box integration with project systems or capital maintenance. Here, we're directly integrating work breakdown structures, network activities, planned project activities, and so on. We're able to bring both our operational maintenance and our capital maintenance and then assess our requirements for both parts and resources within IBP. So once we integrate this master data and transactional data, within IBP, we're able to leverage the uh, best-in-class forecasting algorithms to determine exactly how, many, how much breakages we expect. So we have specialized forecasting that are particularly useful for maintenance within IBP. And then we also have a specialized inventory planning algorithm, which I'll go into a little bit more detail going forward, where we are able to uh, use information from our planning run, from our demand planning run, to then determine inventory parameters. So safety stock, reorder point, target inventory position, that we can then send back to our plant maintenance system and take advantage of in our executional horizon but we also use these parameters for our mid to long-term supply plan in IBP. So once we get to supply planning in IBP, we're now able to create a mid to long-term plan that for both parts and labors, and we're able to do this rough cut capacity planning, which gives like a, a very holistic overview, all within one system of our requirements in the mid to long-term. So this is a solution architecture. What I really wanna focus on is the business process and to show you what it looks like in the system. And, uh, and what I want to focus on is what we're calling our maintenance and operations planning process. So if you're familiar with traditional supply chain planning, you'll be well familiar with sales and operations planning. And we introduce a similar process for maintenance planning as well. So here we have different parts of an organization coming together we have inventory planners, we have maintenance planners, we have supply chain planners, as well as finance and procurement coming together in multiple phases in an iterative process to improve maintenance operational, uh, operational efficiency. And the first step of this process is what we call our demand and segmentation review. Here we really want to analyze the forecast which the system generates. We have this advanced forecasting that I mentioned. But we also do some segmentation based on how often parts are used. Does a part have intermittent or continuous demand? What is the criticality of a part? We have a, a job that we can run to determine how critical a part is for a maintenance operation. And then also, what's the financial impact that a part represents? So this is the ABC XYZ functionality that we have within IBP. Once we determine how critical a part is, we can then move forward with inventory planning. And here the system, this algorithm that I'll go into a little bit more detail, is able to determine recommended safety stock, reorder point target inventory position. And here the team is able to analyze the recommended stock from the advanced planning system with the current ERP stock. So we'll see what this looks like in the system in a bit, but really we're able to analyze any changes between our current settings and the recommended settings from the advanced system. Once we handle any exceptions handling and so on and so forth, we can then integrate this data back into our ERP system for execution planning, and we also use it for supply planning as well. And in our supply and capacity review, here the team comes together once again, and we analyze our parts requirements and labor requirements in the mid to long term. We can analyze where we potentially see some outages, where we might be overstaffed or understaffed, really get a strategic view on what our requirements are in the mid to long-term horizon. 
once our operations team comes together and makes a, a viable plan, we then bring in our financial team as well. And this is where we have our financial review. And within IBP for MRO, we have these financial key figures which are automatically populated when we have a viable supply plan. And then we can see what our mid to long-term plan, how it adheres to our general budget. And when the financial team is in approval with the, the mid to long-term plan and it adheres to the budget, we can explore potential other opportunities to improve costs and so on. And then the financial managers can approve the plan. And then we begin another iteration of the MNOP process. So to summarize, we have this, uh, this process that we've outlined where we're bringing different parts of an organization together to improve maintenance operational efficiency. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the system. And here we have our dashboards, which are configured in the Analytics Stories app. And these dashboards really help drive the conversations between every step of an MNOP process. In our demand review, we have our forecast. We have, we have the analysis of what, uh, how our parts are, whether they're continuous or intermittent demand. And we can go one step further and navigate directly into a tactical planning view from here as well. So the big thing here is that we are showing, we're able to show exactly what our current demand review is, and we can compare it with the previous cycle so that we can then handle exceptions management. Similarly, we have our segmentation review. And in our example here, we've done an ABC segmentation. So this is analyzing the financial impact that our parts have. And we can compare what our ABC segmentation looks like compared to our previous cycle. We can also do other segmentation practices here, such as a PQR analysis, or how many bombs a part is associated with, how many assets a part goes into. And we can do some analysis from here as well. Now let's navigate directly into our tactical planning view. We are now in Planner Workspace. So within Planner Workspace, we're able to do more tactical planning, such as running various jobs. We can run our segmentation jobs from here. Um, we can also get a breakdown of specific product location records that are driving the dashboards that we previously looked at. And like I mentioned, there's a direct navigation from the analytic stories into Planner Workspace here. And here we wanna highlight the part location risk score. So within IBP for MRO, we have an approach to determine how critical a part is for your maintenance organization. We can consider various quantitative and qualitative factors from your data model. And then we attribute a part risk score. And what the part risk score does is it essentially automates the service level determination and in inventory planning. A product that has a part risk score of one needs to have a higher service level and should have, higher, should have higher safety stock or reorder point levels. So really we're able to consider various quantitative and qualitative factors, then determine a part risk score, which gives us a service level, which is important for inventory planning. And uh, then when we get onto inventory planning, uh, we are able to use a new algorithm that we've developed in the past year, known as the MRO inventory planning operator. And this algorithm takes various inputs, such as the service level that we just looked at, as well as the lead time and our demand. And we use special distribution types, particularly the Poisson distribution, which is effective for parts of intermittent demand to determine our inventory parameters, such as target inventory position, reorder point, and safety stock. So what we do is we use the system to determine what type of demand a product has. Does it have intermittent demand? Does it have continuous demand? Does it have lumpy demand? And then we're able to use these different distribution types. The system automatically chooses one of the different distribution types to then most accurately determine your inventory parameters. So once we have our recommendations from the system, now we have our inventory review dashboard here. So if we look at the, the top left chart, we have our recommended safety stock, as well as the current ERP safety stock, 
and what our potential safety stock savings are. So this gives you a big overview of what the advanced planning system is, what type of value it's generating for you. And then you can slice and dice this information in various different ways. You can look at it by safety, uh, safety stock savings by quarter. You can look at it by product group. And you can look at it by, for example, ABC or PQR code as well. The other thing that is very helpful that we work with customers to, to co-innovate on is these inventory review groups. So if you have any exceptions handling, if you see some items have significant savings, you can drill down into tactical planning views and then do uh, an assessment of the potential savings from the system. And again, here we see our tactical planning view. Here we have, a, we're in our safety stock review phase. We're looking at particularly the brake cylinder and we see the current ERP safety stock is 80. We have a recommended safety stock from the system of two, which represents a reduction of 78 or almost $338,000. So this is a large savings. This should be reviewed. We configured the exception handling via the inventory review group. And in this example, let's say, for example, we know that the asset that this part primarily goes into is being decommissioned. So the inventory manager and the maintenance planners, this makes sense to them so they can accept the, rec the system recommendations here. And from within Planner Workspace and IBP, we can navigate directly into S4 system to make the change. So here we have our navigate to pane and we're directly navigating to the next window. And here we're in S4 system, we make the change on the safety stock and now we've recognized our safety stock savings from the system. Now I will note that we also have automated backward integration from IBP to S4HANA and uh, ECC for these inventory parameters. So this can also be automated or it can be manually navigated to as well. So now we've completed our inventory review, we can do our supply and capacity review. And here we have our labor capacity review. Really we're looking at our various different resources that are used for maintenance. We have our contractors, our electrical technicians, our mechanical technicians, and our welders. And here we have this heat map, which identifies our capacity of our resources. We see, for example, that our contractor is expected to be over capacity in April. So we might want to change some of our preventative maintenance to alleviate some of that over capacity situation. We also see in the fourth quarter in October, November, December, that a lot of our resources will be underutilized. So we can look at making some changes in our maintenance plan or taking a look at some other strategic decisions like potentially um, reducing some of our contractor spend and, and so on and so forth. And finally, we have our financial review. So we created this mid to long-term plan for supply planning. And now all of our financial key figures get automatically populated as well. And we can bring the financial managers into the fold as well. So here, the maintenance managers, inventory managers, and financial managers are taking a look at the mid to long-term plan and the financial ramifications. Here, a financial manager can see how this adheres to the projected budget. And if we're aligned, we can approve the mid, -term, mid to long-term plan. And then this winds up kicking into the next iteration of our MNOP process. So the important thing is, is that this process is, is iterative in nature, it's cyclical, and we have these teams coming together to improve visibility for mid to long-term maintenance activities. We're able to optimize procurement decisions. We can improve our labor planning, and then that leads to increased financial planning visibility as well. So less surprises when we do maintenance planning and maintenance budget planning. And uh, in the long term, by taking this network centric approach where we're really looking at the entire network and we're using advanced planning capabilities, we're able to increase our asset uptimes while reducing our working capital as well. So that's a summary. I'm gonna kick it back to Alexis. He's gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the customer stories. Let's talk about the customer success stories uh, that have leveraged this solution to transform 
uh, into uh, an MNOP planning process. Uh, there's a customer in the freight railway um, um, area where they implemented demand inventory um, response and supply. Uh, and you will see that they've improved from a process perspective, be able to integrate uh, with different uh, business areas. So this part of the transformation here is that from a process perspective, you will you will have the opportunity to create a process that uh, that will connect the stakeholders that perhaps never talk to one another and are making decisions individually. Uh, and that is what leads to improving your materials management for plant services and having better visibility to your business in the future, right? Not just in the short term firefighting, but also preparing yourself for the mid and long term as well. Um, I think this is very, very valuable because this is an area where perhaps there is not a, an existing process and there are individual stakeholders making decisions in silos. Then there is a customer in the utility space also leveraging uh, demand and inventory and control tower in IBP. Um, and they were able to reduce warehouse stock in all three warehouses, improve inventory turnover uh, and service levels. And so you'll see that now they can also have a big picture visibility to what is going on and be able to run a scenarios, which is from a solution perspective, uh, very pertinent in terms of preparing to that, you know, your, your, your operations in, in the mid to the long term. And I think that from an scenario planning perspective, it's what allows you to also build a, a, really, a resilient uh, operation as well. Um, also in the oil and gas refining uh, space, same solutions. Now they're inc increasing the planning horizon to five years. So, so you know, if, if your business requirements have a very long planning horizon, this solution can help you with that. Uh, they are leveraging the data in IBP to pursue new supply chain projects, and this is something that is is very pertinent to the oil and gas industry. And then, lastly, we have a, a mining customer case where they were effectively able to reduce working capital, uh, especially for critical assets. So, if you recall what Veteran Cover, criticality of the assets is is actually a, a very important segmentation uh, of um, contributor in the solution, right? So because of that, they were able to effectively manage the inventory investments um, and reduce it 10 to 20% for critical assets, which, you know, typically uh, the fear factor leads you to build excess inventory, right? Just to feel good and protect, you know, the, the asset components. And then also being able to build a long-term visibility. One thing that I will say, that it's common across, as you can see, is that is the ability to create a process that connects key stakeholders here and be able to build up a, a, a plan that is actually bottom up rather than, than top down. Um, and, and so now there is a close relationship of making the operation decisions to procurement decisions to financial decisions. So those are the three pillars that this solution helps us. The question is, what is our approach to do this MNOP transformation? And it's really, you know, when you talk to us, it's about understanding where you are today and where you want to go. So for me, it's about considering key questions in terms of process, people, and technology. And so from a process perspective is, do we have to define a planning process? Is there an existing planning process? We could actually leverage the SAP Signavio solution to actually be able to model uh, and understand, capture your assets uh, of plan, uh, process and design a to be process. We want to increase agility and effectiveness, uh, eliminate silos, right? And 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 you saw in this customer cases that you know silos were were torn down and and created uh, connectivity, right? Uh, being able to shorten planning cycles and perhaps you know being able to be more review review this uh, more frequently in, in a cadence that can help you effectively manage the operation. From a people perspective, is it about creating a planning team? Is it about upgrading the skill sets and knowledge of planners in the team? Uh, and it's also about collaborating in the planning process about, beyond just the operation team, the operational team, in this case with procurement 
and 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 finance. Uh, so imagine the world where you are the operation in your planning process. Now you have a lot more influence and leverage in connecting uh, with your financial peers and your procurement peers, right? And be able to make uh, have a one place where all those decisions are being made uh, in, in unison and synchronized in a way. Um, from a technology perspective, I mean, do you have too many customizations? There are long processing times for your planning runs. If you have any planning run, um, you have long lead times for innovation delivery, right? So take advantage of IBP quarterly uh, upgrades. But not beyond that is the ability to influence those innovations, right? Uh, by co-innovating with SAP, collaborating with SAP. Um, it's more about having a plan to move to a digital cloud-based technology as well. These are examples of questions, right? And this is uh, at Western Actor, it's about understanding where you are today and where you want to go. How we innovate. The way Western Actor innovates is because we have the expertise of integrating all processes and technologies end to end. So this MNOP trans digital transformation that we're reviewing today, it fits really well with this, with our approach of innovating in the supply chain and space. So we have expertise in integrating planning with the operation with logistics across all the supply chain planning processes and execution, right? From IBP to ERP and finance, asset management, leveraging advanced analytics and using business technology, we offer expertise across the board uh, from the ERP to IVP, to transportation management, warehouse management, yard logistics, and so forth. This is just to highlight uh, our success stories of implementing IVP. You'll recognize some of these brands um, when we have deep expertise across many industries, consumer goods, consumer electronics, life sciences, chemicals, uh, discrete manufacturing, and so forth. And we have a global footprint uh, around the globe and be able to support you know your business if for instance have a global footprint but also a local footprint as well and how do we engage well the idea here is our core competency and skills really about val drive value to customers because the way we engage is about combining your the customer insights our point of view and our implementation experience but bringing the three pillars of what makes a innovation uh, in, in supply chain happen. It's about the combination of process, change management, and the technology. There is a lot more detail here, but it's all about you know bringing those three uh, together uh, and be able to deliver those those values. So we have a very comprehensive approach on how we engage uh, you, the customer, um, and driving value. The services that we offer can be approached in a way that is end-to-end, -end, from design to rollout, but these are services that can also be uh, uh, provided individually. Uh, but a starting point for us is design, right? It's about understanding uh, your current assist process, as well as your IT. It's about designing with you uh, new processes and perhaps you know, organizational changes required building a roadmap and architecture and deployment options as well. Uh, the ability to do proof of concepts on our own sandboxes. So for example, we have built an IBP for a road demo in our own instances uh, where we could leverage that asset to do run proof of concepts with you. Then we go into the implementation phase. We, we, we roll out, we, we work with you in rolling out a strategy. Um, and we train and enable your teams, ensuring that there is adoption of process technology and that your, your users and your planners are, and, and, and in this case, uh, training all the stakeholders that touch the MNOP uh, transformation as well. And it's an ongoing process. We continue supporting and improvement, improving. We'll walk with you as innovation comes along, as perhaps new processes need to be uh, included or revised, or including, you know, being able to identify continue, continuous improvements opportunities and be able to work with you to roll them out. I'm not going to go 
too deep into this, but we have a, our own implementation uh, um, methodology called Western Arctic Q methodology, uh, where we have implementation phases that go from the definition, discovery, uh, design, we develop, and then we deploy. And we do a combination of uh, of both, you know, waterfall planning with agile uh, development as well through the cycle of the implementation, uh, where we identify core teams, local teams, making sure that proper training is delivered. But we also have an AMS team where we support post go live support, incident management, handling, hyper care. All of these are pillars, and why am I walking you through this information? Because those are all of these are pillars that will be very will play a critical role in making sure that we deliver value through this digital transformation. So with that, I'll stop and I'll open it up for Q and A. Um, what kind of support or training options are available for um, SAP IBP implementation? And I guess maybe you could note something about the ongoing use support with that. Yeah. Pedrin, do you want to take that first? Yeah, so from the SAP side, we have best practice content, which gives you the sample planning area and an end-to-end -end script to run an entire MNOP process. With it, we also include uh, templates for planning views to help jumpstart any projects. And we also have a sample data set to familiarize yourself with some of the inputs um, that go into the planning processes. So you'll be able to find this within the SAP Best Practices Explorer, um, similar to where you found the traditional IBP best practices. And we also have, I mean, a lot of the features and functionality that we've developed specifically for MRO, we have robust help pages for that explain exactly uh, how some of these features are functioning and how they interact with other parts of IVP. And it, it was to, to, for you to correct me, is there a, a module in the SAP IVP education portal as well, or that's not uh, available? No, not at this time, just the, the best practices. Okay, okay. Yeah. What I, what I will say with the best practice content is that you know you, you don't have to start from scratch from a, the planning area to to all the, the information and assets that you can download from the best practice uh, explorer are are really really helpful to get you started in testing with you know mock-up data right that, that bedroom mentioned but you can also use that model to start populating it with your own data, right? You know, capturing yep. a small set of your own data and run through it. Um, so, so that that's part of a of an education. So, yeah, um, and that's available, and we've been getting good feedback for it. Yep, excellent, excellent. Uh, any other question? No, I think that's it. We think we're good to wrap up. Thanks everybody for attending. Yep. Once good. again, thank you, veteran. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Have a great day.